On today's episode of The Gear Journey, we're going to be going over my whole Way Huge pedal collection. We're also going to be answering some questions from a q and I did on my Instagram, specifically about my collection and Way Huge pedals as a brand and a company. So you guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. It's probably going to be a bit of a long one, but I'm super passionate about this brand and I'm excited to share my collection with you guys, and I'll probably do one every six months, hopefully, as I acquire more pedals. So yeah, let's get into it. Now the first pedal we're going to talk about here is a essential pedal for any John Mayer fan and that of course is the Way Huge Aquapus Mark II. It was initially released to Winter NAM of 2010 and production ran until 2018. Now this slapback delay is quintessential for any John Mayer fan like I've said and the blue on the tan is iconic as well for Way Huge brand and it's arguably one of the most popular Way Huge pedals ever made. Now sadly I don't have the box for this guy. It's the only Way Huge pedal I own that I don't have the box for but I'm probably going to grab another one of these as a backup anyway. Anyway, so I will make sure I get the box with that one. Now let's also get into our first question here. Uh, Steve03 asked, what's the hype on Way Huge pedals? I don't know much about Way Huge besides that the Aquapus is pretty. And yeah, it's a pretty, pretty pedal. Uh, the hype behind Way Huge, well, there isn't really a hype behind the brand, more or less. It's like people are passionate about any brand, like I'm passionate about this brand, I'm passionate about Providence from Japan and their delays. It's just kind of what people like. There is a lot of mystique and hype, I guess, around the more vintage line of pedals as they're highly sought after, and, you know, hand built by George Trips. Those ones obviously fetch quite a huge price on the resale market, like on Reverb and stuff like that, and they're very hard to find for the most part, especially in good condition. It's no real hype mainly around the new ones. The old ones definitely do have some mystique and mystery behind them. All right, the next one in my collection, and as I mentioned, I have the box for every other pedal. This is the, oh God, these boxes can be a pain. The, the Way Huge Overrated Special. This is the very first um, edition with Bonamassa that they did for a signature Way Huge pedal. And they did two runs of these to some people's annoyment. They did two runs of a thousand. Mine right here, as I can look on the, uh, the tin, is 1,703 out of 2,000. So later in the run, second run too, but it's a great pedal. It sounds really, really good. And it is a modified Tube Screamer. It's not entirely a Dumble thing. It's kind of, you know, um, a cheeky take at the whole Dumble in a box overdrive pedal as Joe Bonamas has a very, you know, interesting sense of humor where you wanted to call it the overrated special. And it's a gorgeous pedal, um, probably the best looking way huge pedal, I think in my opinion, just that classic Dumble styling on the box and everything like that. It's crazy good and it sounds brilliant too. Now our next question comes from Ignacio Rossi, 23, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. He asks, does it measure up to boutique overdrive and what self overdrive would you put the overrated special? So does this measure up to a boutique overdrive? For sure it does. I mean, the Green Rhino as a whole, as I'm sure a lot of you know from me talking on my Instagram, is my favorite Tube Screamer pedal ever made. It's brilliant. And then you combine with the 500 hertz mode and the tone switch on here. It gives you just more control and sculpting. And of course it's tweaked to sound a little bit more like the way Joe Bonamassa wants. This definitely stacks up with any other overdrive, especially boutique overdrive that you get. This thing can easily go toe to toe with any, you know, boutique style overdrive. And I do think it's really great at pushing an already overdriven app, which is what Joe Bonamassa and George Strips really went for. So if you're looking for a good booster light overdrive that can do that sort of thing, the way huge overrated special for sure can go toe to toe with a lot of those boutique overdrives. All right, the third panel in my collection is the Fat Sandwich. Now, a lot of people don't really understand that there are two versions of the Fat Sandwich. There is the black version that says distortion on it with the yellow writing, and then there actually is the original version which is yellow in the main enclosure color, and it says harmonic saturator on it. Now that yellow version was one of the first of the three initial pedals that George Strips brought out when they recreated Way Huge and brought the reissues back. They ended up axing that version at around 2014, 2015, and then released this black version instead as kind of the replacement. Schematically, I believe they're all the same, just kind of a bit of a redesign with the graphics and the way the pedal looked. Now the Fat Sandwich is kind of ratty in its sound, but it's a lot more versatile. You got the high and the low switch here for your EQ, as well as a high cut. So it's very, very versatile in the way you can sculpt your tone, and you can get a lot of crazy good sounds out of this. I really like it. I don't usually like a lot of higher gain distortion pedals, but this one I really do enjoy. All right, now for the next set of questions, I'm actually gonna answer two of them at the same time because they kind of talk about the same thing. 
First one is from John Mayer Player. What do you think of the way huge smalls Aquapus? And the second part is from Adrian J. Manuel, who asks, how do you feel about the MK3 and MK2 Aquapus? Sonically, do they make a difference? So if you haven't already, check out my friend the London Guitarist YouTube channel. He uploaded a video today comparing all three of them, and that's gonna pretty much answer the debate. There is a huge difference between the MK1 and then the MK2 and 3. The 3 does sound a little bit darker, and that definitely is kinda gonna be the one sonically you're gonna wanna go with. Now, in terms of getting reissues and stuff like that, um, I prefer the MK2, to be quite honest. I'm not a massive fan of the Smalls enclosure. Uh, I don't think that really is with the way huge brand. I always think of the more bigger box. And then when you're getting now a pedal that's smaller than an MXR enclosure, it just doesn't, doesn't feel quite way huge to me and true to George Tripps' original vision of the brand and everything. I know you gotta innovate, but my opinion, I like the MK2 look better and the sound isn't extremely different to the fact that for that subtle slap back, I would choose the three over the two, but sonically, yes, the three is a little bit darker and it's gonna be closer to the MK1 than the MK2. Disclaimer as well, I've never played in Mark III. I'm gonna get one really quickly here and test it out against my Mark II, but I'm really looking to get a Mark I to add to my collection. So if you have one and you wanna sell it or attempted to sell it, message me on Instagram. Let's chat about it and I'd love to buy it off ya. All right, pedal number four for my Way Huge collection. So the box is going to be the Way Huge The Beer Overdrive. This pedal was released for the Pedal Movie in collaboration, and it's absolutely wicked. Yes, it's just a Ray housed Saucy Box Overdrive, but I'm a former bartender. I bartended all throughout university, and having a pedal that says the Beer Overdrive on it, I thought was just hilarious, and I wanted to get one. Now, there are only 150 of these that they've made ever, and they haven't been sold out for, how long has it been now? Like almost two months since the since these released. So you can still get one and it, they're quite rare actually at only 150. I think a couple years from now, people are gonna look back and be like, oh man, I slept on these and I should have picked one up because they're awesome. And even though they're just a saucy box that's been rehoused or redesigned, it's wicked and it sounds great. It's a really good Klon kind of style overdrive pedal. And I do think this is one that a lot of people are sleeping on. All right, next question here is from Max underscore NL2. Do you have the Way Huge Conspiracy Theory Klon clone? No, I do not. I definitely need to get that and to test it out against my Soraya Tone Centura and a couple other Klon clones like the Archer Icon that I have. But I don't have one yet, but looking forward to getting one and trying it out and doing a shootout video for you guys. All right, now we're getting near the end of the Dunlop reissues here. This is another very recently released pedal. It comes in a really massive box because it's a massive enclosure. And that is the Way Huge Penny Saver Royale. This is the new Joe Bonamassa signature pedal from Way Huge, collaboration with him and George Tripps. Basically, it's an overrated special on one side and then you have a Blue Hippo on the other. The Blue Hippo though isn't quite your standard MK2 or MK3 Blue Hippo. It actually has a tweaked delay time custom set to Joe Bonamassa's specifications. And to me, this really sounds a lot more like a rotary style chorus than just a traditional like CE2 for example. I've shot this side out with my real CE2 and they're close but definitely this is a lot more in that rotary kind of chorusy vibe territory than just a straight out chorus, but it sounds really great and I love it. You can't really go wrong with this and as they say, it's a penny saver in one enclosure. It's a great pedal and it looks really wicked. The black on the gold is phenomenal as well. I do kind of wish they called it the gobby, gobbly wobbler. Gob Gobbly Wobbler. Yeah, the Gobbly Wobbler that they originally played with with the prototypes. That's a pretty kind of weird and wicked name, but Penny Saver Royale is pretty cool too. We know Bonamassa has actually some two rocks that Eli built for him that are called the Penny Saver Royale just in case his dumbbells go down. But yeah, Penny Saver Royale, only 500 of these made, and again, this one's being slept on. Uh, they're not sold out yet, so if you're looking for a rare way huge pedal that definitely at some point is going to be sold out and people are going to be looking for maybe a couple years down the road, this one is one to definitely get. Now the next question comes from BETOV8 who asks, will you collect them all, even the new ones? The answer to that's a little complicated. I would love to have every single way huge pedal in my collection. And that's kind of the goal, but that's gonna take a very, very long time. They've released, you know, 10 only Japan runs. They've released 10 only UK runs for the modern Dunlop reissues that are extremely hard to get and find and that can take a lot of time and a lot of money to be able to actually like acquire all of them. If we're talking about the, the old school ones from the 90s, most of them are fairly obtainable. 
Within reason, I'd like to collect them all. Um, yeah. Now, as I just mentioned in answering that question, there are a few pedals that Way Huge have released that are exclusively location based and in very small runs of 10. Now, this pedal here was a Japan only exclusive. It released in a run of 10 in 2020 last year, and I believe I'm right in saying that it's the rarest pedal that released last year. I didn't even know it existed until I saw Josh Scott do a little bit of a tease on his Instagram, as well as talking about it in the best pedals of 2020 video that he did. This of course is the Way Huge Karina Curry. Um, you'll see on your screen here, the box actually has written in red number three on it. This is number three out of 10. They did make a couple more than 10 of these. Uh, I know they released one on their Instagram that went out um, just as a, uh, as a kind of a raffle, you entered to win it. And a few of them I think did go to friends and family or there were a couple other prototypes that were made. Never made the cut, but yeah, the Way Huge Karina Curry. It is the rarest um, Way Huge pedal in my collection, obviously as 10 were only ever sold to the public. This is, of course was Japan only. It's based on a DoD 250. And of course, Karina Curry is a tribute to the band Alcatraz as Yingwei Malsim famously um, used a DoD 250 live. And of course they have a song called Karina Curry. Now it's really cool too that came with this is you have some of the sheets in the box. These are all the manuals that came with it. You'll see a bigger version on your screen. And it kind of talks about way huge WHE 250 Karina Curry overdrive preamp. And on the back, it's all in Japanese. Um, same thing with the warranty card here from Murray Dari. <laughs> Probably butchering that name, but yeah, it says one year way huge WHE 250 um, inspected by the company. And again, it's all in Japanese, which is really, really cool. Um, just kind of goes to show that it's a Japan only release and everything that came with it was only made in Japanese. And yeah, that's the rarest pedal in my collection. Only 10 ever sold to the public. It's kind of cool that Josh Scott and I have 20% of the full production run of this pedal. So that concludes the Dunlop era way huge pedals. Now let's get into talking about my vintage collection. It's not as big and I definitely hope to grow it really, really soon, but let's talk about it. The vintage way huge boxes, if you've seen my the first episode of the Gear Journey vlogs, um, I talked about it and this is pedal is the first one we're gonna talk about. The boxes are just incredible on the old school way huge ones with the cartoons and everything like that. This one here is a way huge SQ1 Saffron Squeeze. Uh, one of the prettiest vintage way huge pedals ever made. The shade of purple that they chose with the font and then on the golden closure is super great looking. And it's a really great kind of squeeze compressor. I'm not exactly sure what it's a clone of, but definitely does that Mark Knopfler um, squeeze compression thing really, really, really well. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, they only released 261 of these. So this actually makes it the rarest vintage way huge pedal in my collection. This one's serial number 243. Now let's answer another question here. This one's from Gino Inzo underscore. If you keep one, what would it be? Art and tone considered. Well, let's talk about this one here. It's another vintage way huge pedal. Um, this one kind of comes in a more plain box, uh, not quite with the graphics and everything like the other one. So this is a bit of an older box design. And open this guy up. So if I could keep only one pedal in my collection, it would definitely be my way huge green rhino overdrive two. This thing I've mentioned a few times this video already. It sounds absolutely brilliant. The tone, it's my favorite tube screamer I've ever played. It just kind of does that 808 thing, but a little bit fatter and just just a, a, sonically, it's a little bit better to my ear. I will even prefer it over the TS-10. It's just absolutely brilliant. And if I had to have a Tube Screamer drive style overdrive on my board, this is what I'm gonna use. And my personal pedal board that I'm slowly working on building here is gonna have this guy on it. Um, they've done obviously a bunch of different versions of Vintage Way Huge pedals. This one here is in a really nice olive on white. And I think it looks great too. So it's my favorite version that they've actually ever done of the Green Rhino too. So the art and the tone considered, if I, God forbid, you know, all my pedals are falling off a cliff and I can only save one, this would be the one I'd grab for sure. Now the Green Rhino is actually the most produced of the vintage way huge pedals. They made 419 of them. Mine right here is 404. So one of the very last Green Rhinos actually ever produced. Tone demos of this and everything else obviously are in the works and they'll be coming out hopefully pretty soon. Now the Green Rhino even came with the warranty card. Uh, I asked Way Huge if I could still fill that up and they said, nope, 
completed within 10 days of purchase and you know for 1998 I believe that one's from we are we're a little bit off but how cool is that you know the original warranty card all right now for the last pedal in my collection this one's pretty way huge this one here has the box with the graphics on it from the old days if we open it up this one here is really really special and very very rare as well now this is a way huge red llama i actually got it from the same seller as the person who sold my green rhino so i got them in a package deal this one here is wicked now the red llama is kind of a love hate pedal where a lot of people either love it or they hate it personally of course i love it it's got such a wide range and the headroom in it is absolutely ridiculous now what makes this pedal really really rare is when i was actually able to chat with george stripes himself about some of these pedals this version of the Red Llama, they only made about 25. In this clear anodized where the enclosure is just a nice silver on the red writing, there's only about 25 of these that they ever did out of the whole run. So even though the Red Llama is the second most produced way huge pedal from the 1990s, this is actually extremely rare, this version here. And if you watched the pedal movie, it's actually the one that they used during the movie. Not this one exactly, but one of the 25 done in this color kind of anodized version. So this one's really, really cool, super rare, and it sounds great. Like I said, the headroom in it is absolutely insane. Now let's talk about serial numbers for this special run that they did of the Red Llama back in the day. So I'm gonna quote my conversation with George Trips here, who said, about 25 of those clear with red screen llamas were made. Somewhere between serial number 344-ish and 369, the llamas are clear. There is also an early clear llama with black silk screen. So mine is 355, so kind of in the middle of that production run for the clear, um, and they made 382 total of these. So near the end of production and right in the middle of when they were doing those clear with red writing on top of them. And there you guys have it. That's my full way huge pedal collection. As I mentioned before, and as you can probably tell, I'm super passionate about this brand. I think they make some incredible stuff, and I'm really looking forward to adding to it and doing some demos of these pedals. You guys, if you like this episode of The Gear Journey, please give the video a thumbs up, comment down below what else you wanna see, hit subscribe, ring that bell button, do all that good stuff. And until the next time, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.